Let me see. Okay. Now the question is, Sally me, if there are people in the church that are rough, they don't follow God, and they push the leaders. Kama kuna watu kanisani ambao ni watu ambao kuna msisimu kumku na wamekata kumfuata Yesu. How can we handle that problem? Watu kama hao basi tunaweza kuwa namna gani katika hali ya amani nao. Okay, the question it really is how to raise up the spiritual life of people. Swali ni jinsi ya kuguza maisha ya kiroho ya watu. And how to reduce the re- the you know the rejection of the people. Na jinsi ya kupunguza kukataliwa kwa watu katika kanisa. How to help people to follow God and not to follow sinful ways. Jinsi ya kuelekeza watu wamfuate Mungu pasipo kufuata njia za kidunia. So this is very important in the ministry. Hii ni muhimu sana katika huduma. Because if the people don't love God, maana kama watu hawatampenda Mungu, even even if they experience the Holy Spirit, hata kama watahisi Roho Mtakatifu, it's not going to make the church strong. Haitafanya lilo kanisa likuwe na nguvu. I want to say this one thing first. Nataka kusema jambo hili kwanza. Experiencing the Holy Spirit doesn't change the church automatically. Kuhu kuhisi kwa roho ama kujazwa kwa roho mtakatifu hakubadilishi kanisa. There can be people who speak in tongues and they see visions. Kwaweza kuwa na watu wanaonena katika ndimi na wanaona maono and they become proud and they don't follow God. Na sasa wanakuwa na kiburi na hawamfuati Mungu. And then what they say could hurt the church and other Christians. Kwa hivyo chochote kile wanachokizungumza kinaweza basi kikajeruhi kanisa. So we realize that the spiritual life is very important. Kwa hivyo tunaona kwamba maisha ya kiroho ni kitu cha muhimu sana katika kanisa. Now the two things spiritual life and experiencing the Holy Spirit. Kuna vitu mbili maisha ya kiroho na kuhisi kwa Roho Mtakatifu which are more important. Ni gani ambayo ni ya muhimu sana? Kati ya maisha ya kiroho na kujazwa ama kuhisi roho nguvu za roho mtakatifu ni gani la muhimu and i want to say that spiritual life is more important nataka kusema kwamba maisha ya kiroho ni ya muhimu kabisa the people say god is so good watu wanasema mungu ni mwema god is full of mercy mungu amejawa na rehema god is holy mungu ni mtakatifu i want to love god nataka kumpenda mungu i want to live a holy life nataka niishi maisha ya i want to tell people about jesus nataka nizungumzie watu kumuhusu i put myself naweka chini najiweka chini i don't want to be proud Sitaki kuwa na kiburi. Now these people are more important in the kingdom of God. Hawa watu ni muhimu katika falme ya Mungu. But of course, experiencing the Holy Spirit will help them to have power to do witnessing. Na sasa basi kuhizi kwa Roho Mtakatifu kutawasaidia ama kuwape nguvu za kufanya hiyo kazi ya uongozi. So they need to be teaching in the church all the time. Ni lazima tuwe na mafundisho kanisani kila wakati and also our own examples. Na pia sisi wenyewe kama viongozi tuoneshe mfano mwema. The most important thing is that we honor God. Jambo la kwanza la muhimu ni kumtii na kumheshimu Mungu. I believe in God's goodness. Ninaamini katika uzuri wa Mungu. I like God. Ninampenda Mungu. I want to have time with God. Nataka niwe na muda wa kutosha na Mungu. And I like his holiness. Na ninapenda utakatifu wake. I want to obey him. Kwa hivyo ninataka kumheshimu. Now how do you raise up people to have that spirituality? Utasaidia aje uguze watu wa kuwe katika hiyo hiyo hali. It has to come from our own example. Ni lazima wewe kama kiongozi itokane na mfano wako wewe. Our spiritual life example, maisha yako ya kiongozi, maisha yako ya kiroho and also our teaching. Na pia mafundisho yako kama kiongozi. For instance, if a pastor teaches that everyone should love God, kwa mfano kama mchungaji atafundisha kwamba ni lazima kila mtu akampende Mungu, but if the pastor himself doesn't love God, na huyo mchungaji anayefundisha naye hampendi Mungu, if the pastor teaches everyone to be humble, kwa hivyo kama mchungaji anafundisha jinsi ya kunyenyekea, and he is not humble, na mchungaji mwenyewe yeye hanyenyekei, or if he teaches people to be gentle in the words, kama anafundisha watu wawe watu wa upole katika maneno, but they have much anger lakini mwenye anafundisha naye ako na hasira kuu it would affect the spirituality of the church hiyo itaadhiri maisha ya kiroho ya kanisa kwa ujumla now here i want to summarize a teaching here kwa hivyo hapa nataka kuleta kiufupi fundisho hili how i encourage people and myself to be spiritual jinsi ambavyo ninahimiza watu na hata mimi binafsi jinsi ya kuwa kiroho it's like a house a house ni kama nyumba on top of the house is this juu ya nyumba inakaa hivi everything belongs to god 
Kila kitu ni cha Mungu. Everything is is in God's hand. Kila kitu kiko kwenye mikono za Mungu. And he knows the heart of every single person. Na anajua kila tamanio na roho ya kila mtu. He knows our heart right here now. Mungu anajua mawazo yetu hapa hata sasa. When we say, "Yes, I love God." Hata tuseme kwamba ndio nampenda Mungu. I want to bless the people who come today. Nataka nibariki watu wanaokuja leo. If you have this heart, kama uko na huo moyo, God knows. Mungu anajua. Also when we are at home, at home when we are at home. Hata hivyo tukiwa kule nyumbani, do we fight with our family members? Na tunapigana na pia wale wa jamii yetu. So do we honor God in everything? Jua tunahitimu Mungu katika kila neno. Because God sees our heart. Kwa maana Mungu anaona roho zetu. No one can run away from God. Hakuna yeyote aweza kumtoroka Mungu. Let me ask you. Wacha nikuulize. If you have chicken in your home, je kama uko na kuku kwenye boma lako, will the chicken run away? Huyo kuku kwenye boma lako anaweza kukutoroka? Ukitaka kuku. Will come back every day? Wakati wao kuku wanapoondoka, sijioni wanarudi wenyewe. Yes. They come back every day, right? Yeah. Because they have a home there. Kwa sababu wanarudi, sababu gani wanarudi? Kwa sababu hapo ndipo nyumbani kwao. So your chicken cannot run away from your hand. Kwa hivyo huyo kuku hawezi kutoroka kutoka kwako. So we cannot run away from the hand of God. Kwa hivyo sisi pia hatuwezi tukatoroka kutoka kwenye mikono za Mungu. But many people think they can run away from the eyes of God. Watu wengi hufikiria kwamba wanaweza kutoroka kutoka kwenye uso wa Bwana. Many people think, well, I don't tithe. Watu wengi hufikiria kwamba kwa sababu mimi sitoi fungu la kumi, I you know I sin in certain ways mimi ninatenda dhambi zangu za kisiri I'll ask God to forgive me nitauliza uh, Mungu anisamehe and I'll keep sinning lakini nitaendelea kutenda dhambi it doesn't matter haijalishi now if we have many Christians have this heart wa Kristo wengi wako na moyo kama huo. They think they can run away from the eyes of God. Wanafikiria wanaweza kukimbia kutoka kwenye mikono za Mungu. Let me ask you, can you run away from the eyes of God? Wacha nikuuliza, je, waweza kutoroka kutoka kwenye macho ya uso wa Bwana? Have you seen Christians who think that when they do something bad, they can run away from the eyes of God? Na wewe ushawahi shuhudia wale wa Kristo wanaofanya dhambi wanasema kwamba Mungu haoni? Now many Christians think they can run away from God. Kwa hivyo wakristo wengine wanafikiria wanaweza kumtoroka Mungu. Okay, so on top is everything is in God's hand. Kwa hivyo kwenye paa la nyumba kila kitu kiko kwenye mikono za Mungu. No one can run away from him. Hakuna yule awezaye kutoroka kwake. He knows our heart. Anajua nyoyo zetu. And then on the right hand side. Na katika mkono wa kuume If we have a good relationship with God and obey God, the Bible says all these things will be added to us. He will bless us. And then on the bottom, when we serve God, even when we give people a cup of cold water, hata kama wakati tunapopea mtu kikombe cha maji anywe, we will not lose the reward. Hatutapoteza ile dhawabu yetu. He will for sure reward us. Kwa kweli huyu Mungu anatupa dhawabu. So on the right hand side if we have a good relationship with God and love God and obey him, mkono wa kulia ni kwamba tuko na uhusiano mwema na Mungu na tunamheshimu. He will bless us. Atatubariki. When we serve God, tunapomfanyia kazi, he will reward us. Atatupa dhawabu. And then on the left hand side, kwa hivyo mkono wa kushoto, when people disobey God, wakati watu hawamtii Mungu, there is always destruction. Kuna uharibifu. When people fight in a family, kama wakati watu wanapigana katika jamii. When people yell at other people, wakati watu wanapopigia wengine kelele kwenye jamii. There is always destruction. Ni lazima kutakuwa na maharibiko. Now even when they repent, God forgives them. Na hata kama wanapotubu Mungu anawasamehe. Now let me ask you this question. Wacha nikuulie swala hili. Now if someone he says he loves God, kama mtu anasema kwamba anampenda Mungu but he says things very says unpleasant things to you from time to time basi kama mtu atasema kwamba anampenda Mungu lakini anafanya vitu ambavyo vinachukiza mtu ambaye yuko karibu naye even if he's a leader or a pastor hata kama ni kiongozi ama ni mchungaji would his behavior affect his life je 
zile vitu anazozifanya zile za tabia mbaya zitaadhiri maisha yake will it affect the life zitaadhiri maisha yake yes yes it will so any sin will bring destruction kwa hivyo dhambi yoyote italeta uharibifu even though they ask they really ask God to forgive them God will forgive them hata kama wanaomba Mungu awasamee Mungu atawasamee ndio now if a person wants it about they beat up the spouse and then do bad things in a family now God will forgive them aha waweza kupata kwamba katika mnyumba si mnaishi baba na mama kwa hivyo unapata baba anachapa mama kila wakati na mpiga but would the family be affected ndio Mungu atasamee atawasamee lakini je ile familia itaadhirika yes would, yeah the family will be affected yeah familia itaadhirika or people they you know they are rough and they heard other people in the church watu wengine ni watu ambao wako na mbio na wana wanajeruhi watu wengine kanisani it will affect the spiritual life itaadhiri it, itaadhiri maisha ya kiroho it will affect the relationship with people itaadhiri ule uhusiano wa watu and affect the relationship with god na pia itaadhiri uhusiano wa mungu even though god forgives them hata kama mungu amewasamehe god doesn't like their life mungu hapendi maisha Now say this after you. Nataka urudie haya mambo nyuma yangu. Tuko sawa? Tuko pamoja murudie maneno haya nyuma yangu. Amen. Angalia jirani yako kama analala unajua tumekula gideri mingi. Ama hiyo inaitwaje? Now say it. Inaitwa as and say it. Say it with you. Haya murudie haya nyuma yangu. Okay. Now, the part of the house here when people don't serve God at the, the, the house. Mm-hmm the battle when people don't serve God haya hii ni nyumba hapa yes. chini kama watu hawampendezi hawa Mungu hawamtii Mungu in Matthew 25 katika Mathayo 25 the parable of the five talents <coughs> ehe ile adidi ya talanda tano the one who has the one talent buried in the ground yule aliyokuwa na talanda nyingine aliichimbia chini sakafuni that means he doesn't use his talents ina maanisha kwamba hatumii ile talanda yake And this person Jesus said when the master comes back he'll be kicked out in the darkness. Na sasa inasemeka maandiko yanasema kwamba basi wakati mkubwa atakapokuja atamfukuza nje ya nyumba. So when people don't serve God, kama watu hawamtumiki Mungu, it can affect the relationship with God. Inaweza adhiri uhusiano wao na Mungu. Now we are not saved by serving God. Sisi hatuokolewi kwa kufanyia Mungu kazi. We are saved by grace through faith. Tunaokolewa kwa njia kwa neema kwa njia ya imani kwa Kristo Yesu. But when we have the real life of Jesus, lakini kama tuko na maisha kweli ya Mungu, we want to bless people. Tunataka tuwabariki watu. And that is the fruit of salvation. Na hayo ndio matunda ya wokovu. And then in Matthew 25 the last parable the sheep and goats. Na sasa pia katika Mathayo 25 kuna adithi ya sheep the sheep and the goats. Yeah. Kuna adithi ya kondoo na mbuzi. And then the sheep did it to the little ones of Jesus did it to the little ones did nice thing to the little ones of Jesus Na sasa hao kondoo wanafanya mambo mazuri kwa ya Kristo Yesu and then the master was very happy Na sasa aliyekuwa mkuu akakuwa na furaha But the one who did not do it to the little ones lakini yule ambaye hakuwafanyia wadogo wake mema he enter eternal punishment yeye anaenda katika kuadhibiwa milele so look at the house again haya angalia nyumba tena now everyone look here haya kila mmoja utazame huko after him na murudie nyumba nyuma yangu sasa god is in control of everything mungu anadhibiti kila kitu tuseme mungu anadhibiti kila kitu God can see our hearts. Mungu anaona nyoyo zetu. Mungu anaona nyoyo zetu. No one can run away from the eyes of God. Hakuna yeyote aweza kutoroka uso wa Bwana. Hakuna yeyote aweza kutoroka. And the right hand side na katika mkono wa kulia sasa. When we love God and obey God, tunapompenda Mungu na kumtii tuseme tunapompenda Mungu na kumtii. Our life will be blessed. Maisha yetu yatabarikiwa. Maisha yetu yatabarikiwa. When we serve God, tunapomtumikia Mungu, God will 
God will reward us. Mungu atatule, atatupa thawabu. And then on the left side. Aya sasa mkono wa kuume sasa tumebadilika. When people continue to sin, watu wanapoendelea katika dhambi tuseme, watu wanapoendelea katika dhambi and don't have a good relationship with God. Na hawana uhusiano mzuri na Mungu. Na hawana uhusiano mzuri na Mungu. And also when they don't serve God, na pia wasipomfanyia Mungu kazi, na pia wasipomfanyia they will face destruction wataingia katika uharibufuni they will suffer bad consequences watakuwa na matokeo machafu watakuwa na matokeo machafu now do you understand this house haya tumeelewa vile hii nyumba inaka you can briefly summarize it for them hii nyumba jinsi unaona vile hii pai imekaa hivi mkono wako wa kuume ni ule mkono ambao uko na maneno mazuri kumpenda Mungu kumtumikia Mungu okay na huu mkono wa kushoto basi ni ile sehemu ambayo kunafanya mambo maovu hata wampendi Mungu hawana upendo na Mungu sasa watu hawa ambao wanapatikana katika mkono wa kushoto wataenda jehanamu mahali ambapo wataadhibiwa milele lakini hawa wanao mtumikia Mungu katika mkono huu wa kuume ni watu walio na upendo wanapenda Mungu wanapenda wengine watapewa adhabu wata a reward wata, watapewa zawadi na zawadi yao ni maisha ya milele and then i'll ask my people which side do you want to be on aya sasa na waulizeni swali ni sehemu ipi ambayo mngelipenda kuwa mkono wa kulia ama wa kushoto very good very good now from time to time i'll talk about behavior that belong to the left side na sasa kila wakati nitakuwa nikizungumzia tabia zinazopatikana katika mkono wa kushoto. Like if someone always hurt other people, kama vile kuna mtu ambaye anajeruhi watu, they are rough. Yeye ni mtu ambaye kuna msisimko mkuu. I don't have to fight with them. Si kwamba inafaa nipigane nao. I'll just communicate with them. Mimi nitawazungumza tu. I will ask them, do you realize what you have done to the other person? Itawauliza je, waweza kukumbuka kile ambacho umefanyia mwenzako? Now, if he doesn't admit, now if he doesn't admit, then I can get more witnesses. Na sasa kama hata kubali lile kosa ambalo nimemuuliza basi, nitaleta washahidi wengine. And I ask him, what do you think what you've done will affect other people na niwauliza je mnafikiria ni kitu gani ambacho kitafanyika kwa hawa watu kulingana ile makosa huyu amefanya now i don't want to just point out the figure at them mimi sitaki kwamba niwe nikionyesha vidole namna hivi i just ask them nitauliza tuko upole what you have done to these people how you were rough to these people kile ambacho umewafanyia watu hawa na vile umekuwa mkali kwa watu hawa how will it affect the other people unafikiria itaadhiri namna gani watu wengine Now if he says oh it won't affect them. Akisema kwamba ah hiyo haina madhara. Then I will get more people and ask them and then discuss do you think when you are rough it won't affect other people? Nitaleta watu wao kuwe watu wengine tena niwauliza je mtu ukifanya jambo baya unafikiria kwamba lina madhara kwa watu wengine? So when people are not repentant I will lead them to repentance sasa hawa watu wakisha tukisha zungumuza basi nitawaongoza watu katika toba i won't push them to repentance sita wasukuma katika toba i will ask them what do you think what you did how would it would affect other people nitawauliza je unafikiria kile ambacho wamekifanya kitakuwa na madhara yapi katika watu wengine and does god like that na je mungu anapenda hiyo and then if he says no god doesn't like that na akisema kwamba mungu hapendi hayo then i will say okay Uh, do you want to find a way to take care of this problem? Nitasema okay ni sawa. Je, uko na njia ambayo utaitumia ili usuluhishe swala hili? So what I mean is if I see any bad behavior in the church, kile najaribu kusema ninapoona tabia nyingine mbaya kanisani, I will not accuse them. Sitaenda kuchuna watu masikio na kuwafinyilia chini na kuwagombeza. I will ask them nitawauliza what do you think about this unafikiria nini kuhusu hili how it would affect your relationship with god itaadhiri vipi uhusiano wako na mungu so to lead these people to repentance ili kuongoza hao watu katika toba okay now so this is briefly i have explained how i raise up the spiritual life of people kwa ufupi nimekuwa tu nikieleza jinsi nitakavyoinua maisha ya watu ya kiroho and also how i help people to handle certain problems in life na pia vile ninavyoweza kusaidia watu kushughulikia masuala magumu maishani okay now this is a very simple teaching haya ni mafundisho tu ya ya kawaida just with the house vile tu nyumba hivyo the right side and the left side 
mkono wa wa kulia na kushoto it's very clear and obvious hiyo ni ya muhimu na inaonekana wazi and then you can ask people which side do you want to be on sasa waweza kuuliza watu wewe unataka kuwa sehemu ipi and if i notice there are some people in the church who purposely intentionally hurt other people na nikigundua kwamba kuna watu wanaoadhiri watu kanisani wanaoadhiri tu kwa macho peupe I will for sure take care of that. Nitashughulikia swala hilo. I won't let the destruction continue. Sitaacha hao watu waendelee kuharibu kanisa.